Uh, Hi, Dr. Casper. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and for your willingness to uh, answer some questions that were sent in by the community. Uh, we really appreciate everything that you've done for SMA and you continue to do, so thank you. Hi, Vincent. It's great to be here and happy to answer questions. It's also wonderful to meet your family uh, and to meet Sophia. Uh, congratulations on your newborn, uh, Jackson, as well. Thank you very much. So uh, if, if we can start, I have a couple of questions that were submitted. Uh, the first one is by Julie Prendes, and she writes, Please thank Dr. Casper for working so hard to help our kiddos and for taking the time to visit one of our own. That alone shows that he has a heart and passion for our SMA community. Please also tell him we pray for him and his team every day. And the only question I would have is when and how much more money does he need to make it happen sooner? Uh, so first, uh, Julie, thank you so much for, for your support and your very kind words. Uh, it, it's our honor to, uh, to, to work uh, as hard as we are uh, on SMA uh, for, for all of the kids and families that are affected. Uh, so to answer your question, uh, those are great questions uh, as far as when and how much money uh, a, a translational program like this costs and how long it takes to develop. Uh, first off, uh, as far as the timing, let me just give you a little background to our translational program and, and what we're doing and how long some of these things take. We have a rigorous timeline. Uh, certainly things can change, uh, but this is our uh, where we stand right now on our program. Uh, we're in the process of completing some non-human primate studies to demonstrate that our gene therapy can actually target motor neurons in non-human primates. The results of those studies are looking quite promising. We're in the process now of doing some safety studies uh, so within this, uh, in both mouse and non-human primates of, of the product uh, or, or the therapy that we're developing, an adeno-associated virus expressing SMN that are going to be tested for safety in both mouse and non-human primates. But within the next several months, uh, we're getting these studies uh, initiated. Already some data is coming out uh, that is showing that, uh, that the virus is, is safe when it's delivered uh, and that it's uh, hitting the targets that we want, that is, it's targeting motor neurons in both mouse and non-human primates. Uh, once we develop, uh, this is a long-winded answer, but once we have that data, we have set the bar quite high for ourselves uh, to feel confident that the, that the therapy that we're proposing is safe and well tolerated. That's when we'll go and approach the Food and Drug Administration in what is termed a pre-investigational new drug application in, in conference call. Uh, this is where we propose a, uh, the clinical trial and the clinical trial development in the formal safety studies and get the input from the Food and Drug Administration and their expertise uh, to, to really outline what the final timeline will be to move into human clinical trials. So what is the uh, a window uh, of time uh, for such studies? We're hoping to initiate the conversations and submit a pre-IND application to the Food and Drug Administration uh, in uh, the end of this year or the very early part of next year. Uh, so hopefully we'll have some clear guidance from, from the Food and Drug Administration within the first quarter of 2011. We're hoping to, to have this happening uh, by January. Uh, once we have that data, uh, once we have that feedback from the Food and Drug Administration, we'll certainly share uh, with the community where we stand and what the absolute timeline is. Typically, the sorts of safety studies, those formal safety studies, require uh, about six months. Uh, uh, so we're thinking six months to one year to initiate uh, the IND submission, that is the investigational new drug application uh, that would then be reviewed by the Food and Drug Administration and would give the green light. How much uh, does this cost? Typically, translational programs, that is, from the proof of concept, the efficacy studies, to actually entering uh, a, uh, to, to delivering the investigational new drug application is in the one, 
is several million dollars. Uh, typically, on, on similar programs, it's been under two million dollars to move a, a program, a gene therapy forward uh, to the point that it looks like we're moving uh, for IND uh, investigational new drug filing. So, uh, just just as a subpart to this question, uh, since we've hit on this topic, are you currently uh, fully funded uh, going forward? Uh, so that's a good uh, good question. Do we have enough money? Uh, so for this program right now where we're testing in our preclinical studies for safety, uh, that is, it's not a formal FDA-sanctioned uh, safety study. Rather, it's to, gain, to give us confidence and to provide data, uh, pertinent data, to the Food and Drug Administration on the safety. Uh, we do have funding uh, from multiple sources to actually achieve those, uh, those initial safety studies in both mouse and non-human primates. For the full translation to get to human clinical trials, that's going to require uh, more money. Okay. Um, I have a question here from Ashley Gopert. Uh, does he believe there is a window of opportunity for gene therapy to work on type 1s, or does he believe the therapy will work on all type 1s but will work better with the younger the child is. Uh, hi, Ashley. Uh, these are uh, again a excellent questions here on on the fact of uh, what is the proper uh, patient to, to the first clinical trial. Will this drug? Will this therapy uh, treat all SMA patients, all type ones? Uh, completely honest, we we do not know uh, whether our therapy is going to be uh, efficacious in type 1s, type 2s, or type 3 uh, patients. All of our data to date uh, in the mouse models, this is using the severe uh, SMA uh, Delta 7 mouse that Dr. Sentner and Dr. Burgess developed, has, has demonstrated that the earlier that we give the therapy, uh, our gene therapy, the better uh, the results that we have. So in the mouse model, so this mouse only lives 15 days. If we deliver at postnatal day one, so right after birth or up to two days after birth, we can have the full rescue of the mouse. That is, mice are living past 300 days of age. If we start delivering our gene therapy at later time points, we, we see reduced effects of, uh, of our uh, reduced efficacy. That is, animals don't live uh, as long. So, uh, I don't think anyone can truly answer this question fully or to, to have their, uh, the exact answer of what is, uh, where will this therapy work. Uh, it, it's an experimental therapy, um, and I think that needs to be noted. Uh, we have done preclinical efficacy studies. We have confidence in the mouse model that we can alter the disease if we deliver early enough, that we can have profound responses, and animals live for a very long period of time, and, and they have normal function as well. If we deliver later, at least in the mouse, we have less of a response to no response, depending upon when we deliver. Now, that's a mouse. That's not a patient. So truly, uh, clinical trials need to uh, keep that into consideration. That is, uh, what is the first patient population that we go into, and that will then uh, success in, in any uh, population. But first making the point that any uh, clinical trial uh, of an experimental therapeutic first needs to demonstrate safety. And, and one then, uh, secondly, looks for the potential of efficacy. So we need to be careful in clinical trial design that, that we establish safety first, uh, and that's what the Food and Drug Administration will, will be looking at. And then secondly, and importantly, we'll be looking for efficacy. Based upon all of the data that we have to date, it looks like the earlier that one delivers a therapeutic in SMA. This, this isn't true just for gene therapy in our studies, but it's also been shown for uh, oligonucleotide therapies 
uh, that, that are recently coming out and being presented at meetings. The earlier that you give these drugs, that you give the therapy in the mouse, the better the results have been. That doesn't mean that it will not work given uh, into a type 1 at a later stage. It just has not been tested experimentally in the mouse and has not been tested uh, in human clinical trials. These are things that we'll be paying attention to in the design of the clinical trial. And then uh, there's certainly, I think it's important for me to, to note here, uh, we're not excluding anyone. So we're paying attention to all of the classes of spinal muscular atrophy, type 1s, type 2s, type 3s. We have to start somewhere, and we want to try to develop uh, first safety and then any signs of efficacy and to design that the first clinical trial so that one uh, can, can see any hope of, of, of efficacy in a trial. Okay, thank you. And another question, there's a few questions from Ashley, a very educated mom asking some great questions. How quickly did they see results in the mouse model? Did the results improve over time? Is the therapy going to be needed on an ongoing basis, say every six month, year, et cetera? Or only one, only needed once. I, I guess she's she means an administration of the gene therapy. So our the anno associated virus. Uh, this uh, virus has been in a number of human clinical trials, and it's it's been demonstrated to be quite safe. It has a very uh, a clean bill of safety so far in human clinical trials to date, and it's been tested in Parkinson's disease, it's been tested in cystic fibrosis, and, and, and other genetic disorders. Uh, the, the, the one thing about gene therapy and the use of anno-associated viruses is that it is a one-time gene delivery. That is, the shell of the virus delivers its DNA into the target cells, and those cells then continuously produces the protein for the life of that cell. So in, in our case, we're targeting muscle, we're targeting motor neurons. The muscle would continuously express the SMN gene, the SMN protein, and the motor neurons would continuously express the, uh, the SMN gene and the SMN protein. Uh, that's a, a, a great aspect to, to the delivery of a gene therapy utilizing anno-associated virus in the fact that it's a one-time gene delivery. Uh, and therefore those cells continuously will produce uh, the protein product of interest. In our case for SMA, uh, that is a survival motor neuron uh, gene and to produce the protein, SMN. How quickly did we see the results? So when we look at a marker gene after we deliver the virus one time in, in a mouse through the vasculature, that is putting the virus through the bloodstream, we can detect motor neurons at two days after gene delivery that they're starting to express the protein. Uh, it ramps up in expression a bit over time, but as early as one to two days after injection, we start seeing the production of the protein. Now in the mouse model, uh, it took several days, but uh, quickly these animals started uh, increasing their body weights. So uh, by the time uh, that they were uh, two weeks of age, they were significantly different uh, on, on their body weight size. So that was de demonstrating that the SMN protein was, being, was likely being expressed and was having biological function uh, to the motor neurons and, uh, and other cell types that we were targeting. And uh, just on a side note, uh, how are you administering uh, the gene therapy? Uh, so we, we place the, uh, the virus into the bloodstream. So in the mouse, there's a, there's a vein right after birth, uh, right in the, uh, in the face. It's called the facial vein. And we deliver the virus directly into uh, the facial vein, so through the bloodstream of those uh, animals. Uh, now, in non-human primates, we have targeted the saphenous vein. Uh, basically, if you put this virus into the bloodstream, the virus uh, will remarkably make its way past the blood-brain barrier and target motor neurons within the spinal cord. Uh, in mouse studies, we have uh, 60 to 70 percent of the motor neurons throughout the entire spinal cord that are expressing uh, the gene. Now, there's a window of opportunity in the mouse. Uh, we've, we've been funded 
to ask a 